Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. One thing I've heard the last few weeks from people who have followed the team for several years and people who might have known you back at LSU was just how quickly the plays get in, how much quicker it gets into the huddle when you guys are never late in the huddle. Just give me a sense for what your process is like with play calling when it's not scripted. Um, look, I think you uh, I think when you call a play, you have an idea of, you know, the execution ideal world with how it's going to work. And, you know, you call a play on first and first and 10, you have an idea. Hey, uh, best case scenario, we get to second and three. This is my thought process. Hey, it's a second down call. You know, obviously want to get the first down, but might be thinking third and six. So you kind of have an idea. So you know, I call a play. I'm already trying to think about what's what can potentially be next. And you get the play in, in in time. It just gives your quarterback enough time to be able to see what's out there in the defenses and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of our thought process. Let's go to David Newton and then Jason Huber. Hey, Joe, good to see you today. Um, how do you judge football intelligence and how do you judge Teddy Bridgewater in terms of that? Um, I think that's a, I think it's a great question. I think it goes twofold. You know, sometimes you can, you can quiz it. You can teach somebody something and put them on the board and they can, uh, they can, they can go through it and like it's nothing and know it all. But I think uh, to me, a huge thing when it comes to football intelligence is just how they process things when, you know, in the gray um, it's, it's easy to uh, just know exactly where to go with the football versus this coverage, go, where to go with, where to make this check. But when, you know, when you close your eyes and you open it and you get so many different things and they know exactly where to go with it, um, I think that that's how you judge football intelligence. So it's tough. Um, I think it's something in the draft process that guys spend a lot of time on and guys are right and wrong. It's it's, it's hard to really go through it because to me, it's not necessarily about how smart they are. It's about how much they can process. And I think Teddy is, uh, Teddy does an, an elite job at that. Is there one play that you would uh, pinpoint that would just kind of be an example of just how that works with him or how that displays that? Yeah, I think uh, every third down call, um, you know, just if you just see him just, you know, when he's up there, he's, you see full confidence in terms of him, you know, understanding, hey, when he when he might be hot, understanding where, where the protection might be coming with and where his answers are. And, you know, so you out there sometimes, you know, from, a, you know, from a different perspective, you might think like, hey, we didn't protect it right where he and his mind knew exactly why he did what he did. And, you know, he threw the ball where he threw it for that reason. So, uh, you know, absolutely. Hey, Joe, uh, I'm wondering, have through the first five weeks with this offense, have things clicked maybe a little bit faster than, than you would have thought? And, and even if not, why do you think things are, are you know, working so well so far? Oh, well, we, have, we have a lot that we have to improve on. It's still not to the, to the level that we, you know, where we expect to be. And so uh, we knew that this, any, any time in a new season, beginning of season, whether you've been together for 10 years or whether you're just now getting together, that you're going to have to learn, you know, learn your football players, learn your team and learn just the dynamic. And so every week, you know, we have an opportunity, uh, you know, just uh, working with your guys, time on task with routes, whether it is, you know, progressions and reads and protections. And, you know, now we're getting more comfortable with each other in terms of getting a feel for that. And you can see that on the football field. And so, you know, there's a lot that we're leaving out there that we have to continue to improve on. But I think the guys at the comfort level within the system and within with each other, I think, is uh, continuing to improve. Let's go to Miles Simmons and then Phil Orban. Hey, Joe, uh, when you have somebody like Curtis <clears throat> who's been making plays as he has from different spots, just how how fun is that to scheme for? And how much do you want to be able to get the ball in his hands in different ways? Yeah, I think uh, Curtis has been huge, you, you know, for, for any type of success we've had, a lot of it has to do with Curtis Samuel. And I think so much of it, what Curtis does, doesn't necessarily show up in the stat book. And I think that, uh, you know, that shows the type of player he is. You see him, you know, you see explosive runs from Mike Davis and you see Curtis, you know, making huge blocks. You watch DJ Moore this past week, you know, catch a touchdown and Curtis is downfield blocking. You see third down, he's making plays, run game and pass game. So, you know, he's such a, you know, a dynamic, you know, weapon that is willing to just do anything to, you know, to win and help the team. And so, yeah, you want to get the ball to him as much as possible. And, you know, and when the situation is that you can, you know that he's going to make a play. But then when you watch when the ball's not in his hands, you watch what he does. And it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, he's an incredible teammate, incredible football player. And, you know, it's, it, it pumps me up watching him play football. Joe, you said something a couple of weeks ago um, in terms of your game planning that you don't think too far ahead. And I think that was in a very specific situation where you were talking about Christian coming back. But, but just in general, how, how much do you – focus entirely on next week's opponent and, and are there times when you're identifying things that maybe won't work against Chicago but might work down the line how do you kind of balance that 
you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, when you talk with Coach Roll, you know, we're so process oriented that, that one thing we will never think about is the last vict- the last you know, game, I and mean, we'll never think about what's next. And so, um, you know, right now it's it's fully, you know, it's all Chicago. It's not, hey, we like this play and it could potentially work against whoever we play next. It's, hey, is this something that we feel like we'll have success against Chicago? And everything we're doing is just try to go one and zero against Chicago. And if I could just, find, is that the way you've always been, or or do you kind of think of concepts and? and- is that maybe something you do in the off season? Kind of think of bigger picture concepts, maybe. Yeah, I think in the off season you can look at things and and, and see, hey, this is a concept that you know you see teams having success against certain coverages, and you might want to incorporate it within your system, um, and then see how it can fit some of your players. But uh, from a week to week standpoint, it's it's uh, strictly on how we can potentially attack and have success against our upcoming opponent. All right, let's go to Jonathan Alexander and then Joe Person. Hey, Joe. Um, hope all is well. Um, you, you may have already answered this a little bit, but, you know, I'm wondering, have you, I have two questions, actually. Have you gotten to the point where um, you look at how you may utilize Mike and Christian when Christian does come back? I know that could be two, three weeks out or whatever, but I'm wondering, have you at all looked at that yet? No, I, I haven't. Kind of just going back to the kind of last thought is, you know, we we knew we'd go into this season that there was going to be so many obstacles, you know, with injuries, with you know, things going on in the world that we were just going to have to prepare and, and know who's going to be on your roster and who's going to be up that week. And we're going to have to find a way to find out what they do best and make it work. And so, um, you know, each week you go into it and, you know, Christian's not available. Um, those thoughts aren't even on my mind. Yeah, I figured that was probably it. And also, it'll be a great it'll be a great it'll be a great thing to happen whenever that that case does uh, when it does occur. But yeah, currently uh, not not yet. I'm sure it will. Um, the other thing I had um, was, you know, when you were evaluating film, watching Mike, watching him in camp, you know, did you foresee him, if there was an opportunity that came about, did you foresee him having the success he's having or did he, or did this even surprise you a little bit? No, not, nothing that Mike Davis is doing is surprising. I don't think anybody on this football team in this organization, um, that's what you saw in training camp. Uh that's the mindset that you saw the way that, every, you know, the way he's running this football and everybody sees a guy that's look, you know, plays like he's mad, plays like he's angry. Well, that's what we saw in training camp. And, uh, you know, that was the approach he took in the off season and, and through virtual off season. And um, so nothing that Mike Davis does surprises anybody on this football team. And it was the expectation of him. And, you know, he's continuing to improve and he knows he has, he has ways to improve and every week he's finding ways to get better. Hey, Joe, I understand where your focus is with the Bears this week, but because we get you a little late in the week, I was hoping you could indulge uh, me a quick Saints question. Just uh, was hoping you could explain again sort of how and why um, you, you took that Saints job and then what you got from uh, out of that two-year experience down there. Uh, I was I was fortunate there was an opportunity that, uh, you know, an offensive assistant job opened up with uh, in New Orleans and, I was afforded an opportunity to interview for there and and I was fortunate everything kind of worked out. You know, there were some connections to, you know, some of my college, one of my college coaches is a coach down there. And so I was just fortunate to just get the foot in the door. And, um, you know, I was extremely fortunate for the opportunity. I had a great, great two years there, learned a lot of football and um, it's got me to the point I am right now. Anything specifically from a, you know, just kind of an operational standpoint or schematic standpoint that, you know, you feel like you really kind of improved on there? I mean, anytime you're, you're, you know, your, your first NFL opportunity and you're sitting there learning football from some of the best minds in the game and around some of the, you know, one of the best quarterbacks the game has ever seen, I think you just sit there and you just take notes and you just, uh, you know, you just learn, you get a doctorate in, in you know, in football. And so uh, I was just fortunate from that opportunity. All right, let's go to Josh Klein and then Elena Getzenberg. Hey, Joe, uh, thanks for taking the time. Um, uh, I know a lot of focus on the Bears game, but last week in Atlanta, or it seemed like uh, Teddy had a lot of kind of um, ability and the, the freedom to check to run plays when the safeties were deep. Is that something that's constantly that you give him kind of carte blanche to do on every uh, on every snap? And, and how good is he at, at kind of ID- IDing that defense specifically from switching out of a pass to a run or vice versa? Yeah, I, we have, you know, I, I believe in a quarterback having full ownership. Um, and uh, and I think a lot of that comes with, you know, the reps and the preparation and the confidence through camp and showing that the ability to do it. And, you know, that's the type of quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is. He knows 
you know, he, he can see, he can identify the looks and let's try to get us into the best play. And so whether it's a run to a run, a pass to a pass, a run to a pass, you know, he has the ability to do that on any, on any snap. And, uh, you know, I've, I believe in, in ownership from that role and the accountability. And I think a quarterback that, you know, uh, looks forward to that and having that approach and knows that, Hey, I'm not sitting there and Hey, it's a bad, you know, bad play. Cause there's going to be a good amount of them. And, uh, He's not sitting there like, oh, I got to just hand this ball off into a bad box. And it's like, hey, you know, we have answers and let's let's get to let's get to a different play. And uh, I think Teddy does an incredible job at that. Just to follow up on that, is there a specific number of plays that he kind of has in his pocket? At, or is it just kind of the the whole I mean, not the whole playbook, but how many plays can he check to? Uh, I think it's I think it's a week to week thing. And um, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the type of defenses that we're facing and maybe the, the potential scheme that uh, the original call was in. And a lot of that is predetermined, you know, throughout the game week in the, in the game planning process and just, you know, trying to put him in a, a comfortable position in terms of identifying things and trying to get our playmakers in space. And uh, I think Teddy's doing a great job at that. Hey Joe, this is kind of going off Josh's question kind of, but, you know, earlier in the season or before the season started, we heard from Matt, we heard from you that this is going to be as much Teddy's offense as it is yours in a sense. And I was curious, you know, What's it? What's your process of each week? Do you kind of go over with him what plays he's most comfortable with? I know you, you like to do what plays he likes best. Like, what are those conversations like with him each week, like after games? Yeah, I this this is I mean, we said it before. This is Teddy Bridgewater's offense. It's um, it's it's surrounded. You know, everything that we've done has been around things that he feels like he has success and he has answers. And you know, on a week to week basis, we'll go through every portion of the call sheets and. You know, he'll send me thoughts, you know, at night of he might look at something that, you know, we're we're kind of game planning for. And then um, we'll meet the night before the game. And if, if it's something that, hey, I might have a great feel for it and I think it's going to be an incredible play. But, you know, the quarterback with the ball in his hands doesn't see it the exact same way or might might hesitate on it. Well, why should I call that football play? And so I'll take it off the call sheet and we'll rep what he feels comfortable with. And um, and it goes from that. There's no ego from that role. Um, from my from my perspective, it's. Uh, it's how can Teddy Bridgewater and, and the Carolina Panthers offense have success, and uh, it's all his show, and we're rolling with it. All right, guys, we have time for a couple more, so let's go to David Newton and then Phil Orban. Hey, Joe, one more on the kind of that same line. If, if Sean Payton were to be looking at your offense right now, how much would he say has a Saints influence? Uh, it's, it's a great question. I'm, I can't really answer that question. Um, I think it's a – uh, our offense is a is a uh, a combination of a bunch of the minds that we have in our room right now, and uh, that's what was that excited me about our offensive staff that Coach Roll kind of put together is you got so many guys from so many different systems, and we were able to, able to put together a system that we felt fit our players, and uh, didn't just sit there and say, hey, we had a lot of success doing this at one place, a lot of success doing this at another place, and now we have an offense that doesn't have an identity, and we're still working towards that and building towards that. But uh, um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what he would say what he would think turning on the tape. Hey, Joe, um, Matt Paradis has been playing pretty well in the offensive line as a whole. I'm wondering um, what you've seen from him and more specifically, if your system asks anything unique of the center. Matt Paradis is, uh, you know, a leader on our football team. Um, he is such a, uh, a tough football player, but he's such an incredible, like incredibly smart football player. Um, you know, he's able to go up there and identify and understand exactly where things are coming from, identify issues. He does a great job of communication on the sidelines, talking with, you know, our line coach and relaying things to me. And, you know, the dialogue between him and Teddy is, uh, is incredible. And so we put a lot of ownership on everybody on our offense. Um, you know, I, I don't want anybody out there just thinking they're out there, just playing, making just out there hearing a play call and just running a play. You know, I want them to understand the why and the, and the how. And, and I think Matt Paradis does an elite job at that and understanding that. And he's been playing at an extremely high level. So well, I'm sorry, what, what, do, like, what is he, what sort of things does he communicate with you directly about what the defense? Does? Well, I always, I mean, I always want to know in terms of how he's feeling from a, in the run game perspective, if there's if there certain types of runs that he has a better feel for and understanding. I think it's important to have dialogue with your players. Um, you know, the same standpoint that you have with the quarterbacks, um, with Teddy, but having a conversation with the running backs and offense line. And so I think Matt has a has a great feel of that. You know, he's, he's a veteran in this league and has a great understanding. And then from a protection standpoint, just talking through things, seeing how he sees things and how Teddy sees things, um, because we can see things. It's very easy as, as a coach to hit pause on a remote, be like, oh, don't you just see this guy doing here? Well, when you're out there and, you know, they're sweating your eye and everything's moving faster, you've got a guy like Matt Paradis that can identify things and Teddy that can identify things and it makes our lives um, a lot easier. 
All right, last question. Let's go to Stacy Dales before we wrap up. Joe, I'm just wondering what the conversations are you like this week for you as, as it pertains to your red zone offense facing the best red zone defense in football right now? Yeah, it's it's going to be a huge you know focus point um, you know and I know that's something that we'll start meeting on tonight. But the four point plays, the red zones, third down in the red zone, that's something that's critical, especially going against you know the Bears, where they're one of the top third down defenses in the league and one of the top red zone defenses. And so you know that combination is going to be a great challenge for us, but uh, something that we definitely have to improve on uh, um, moving forward.